Hi, welcome to this uh, session, uh, Harbor 101. Um, my name is uh, Henry Zhang. I'm the chief technologist of VMware China, and I'm the uh, creator of Project Harbor. And today, uh, joining me uh, today is uh, Stephen Zhou, uh, staff engineer of VMware, and he's the maintainer of the Harbor Project Harbor. So today, we'll give an introduction about what Harbor is and and uh, what what it can help us in the cloud native space. And then uh, hopefully we can have, have a demo, and then we hopefully we can have some question, answer some questions that, uh, about Harbor. Um, this is the first time that we uh, uh, debuted, in, joined the uh, cloud native uh, uh, after joining the cloud native foundation CNCF, and the first time we are in the North America uh, KubeCon. So uh, we will hopefully that will be interested to the people here for uh, for this uh, first introduction to the, to the project. Here, here's the agenda of uh, today. Uh, we'll first introduce uh, what Harbor is, uh, briefly uh, about the, the project's goal and mission. And then we have introduce some typical use cases about Harbor, how we can manage uh, container images and, and other contents uh, securely and efficiently. And then we'll talk about the roadmap and have some demos about uh, the, what Harbor can help you. So Harbor's mission is that we, uh, it's a trusted uh, cloud native registry that store, signs, and, and scan some content. It's especially uh, container images, and re recently, uh, more recently, we have the ham truck. And the mission is to provide a cloud native environment to the ability to confident, uh, confidently to manage and serve con container images. Um, Harbor was originally created in a, in a, in a, in a small team that I, lead, I led uh, in, in China R&D, VMware. At the time, it's uh, about uh, 2014 that we uh, we created a small project and open source in uh, 2016, and and now we are uh, adopted by people uh, not only in China but also uh, the people uh, developer in the in the worldwide community. Uh, it's basically a registry for containers and ham trucks. Uh, the current focus is to store, sign, and scan content, uh, provide a consistent experience either on prem or, 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 on, or in the cloud. Uh, the open source license is uh, Apache 2, uh, which is uh, business friendly uh, for, for most of the, the use cases. And uh, we uh, was uh, accepted into the sandbox stage in the July uh, this year, and as the first container registry. And more recently, in last year, uh, last month, uh, KubeCon Shanghai, uh, we uh, it was announced that we moved into the incubation incubation project uh, in the CNCF. Uh, here's the timeline for Project Harbor. Uh, initial inception inception is like in 2014, uh, the second half, uh, in in our uh, VMware China R&D, and then we open source about up to two years of internal uh, dog fooding uh, in trying in our own projects, uh, in the 2016 March, and later on we have uh, uh, achieved uh, quite some uh, community uh, traction and momentum from the community. And, um, and re more, more recently this year, we joined the CNCF uh, from Sandbox and then Incubation. Uh, after the incubation, up, after we joined the CNCF, the, the momentum in the community is quite well. Here's some metrics for the engagement in the community. Uh, we have more than uh, 6,000 uh, plus uh, stars on GitHub and more than 20,000 downloads. Uh, a lot of folks and more than 100 contributors are coming from everywhere uh, from the world. Um, so uh, a lot of uh, enterprise user, uh, internet companies, and as well as the small startups, they are all using Harbors for to manage their container images in their cloud native environment. The key features of Harbor, um, so I, I will list a, a few of them here, uh, include, which includes the identity uh, integration and role-based access control, RBAC, and the security and vulnerability scanning and analysis. Uh, also, we have the content trust or uh, signing or uh, validation of the content, and we have uh, uh, image replication across different locations and between Harbor instances. Uh, recently, most recently, we added in the Ham Trust support uh, for the management uh, Ham Trust repo, and we also have uh, internationalization um, with different languages. Uh, we have English and Chinese, and also a community member help us uh, create other other languages support. And operationally, uh, we can de Harbor is, can be deployed in using very simple Docker Compose command. Uh, a few uh, one command can bring up the uh, the, the Harbor system. And we also recently we can also um, use Hamtrap to deploy Harbor. Um, 
in the right now we have different components in Harbor. Mo mostly all of them are, are open source. Here's the diagram of the Harbor architecture. Um, here the blue one, uh, the, our code, uh, the Harbor project itself, uh, we're containing the core services about API, authentication, and GUI. And we also have the uh, jobs services uh, running the batch, uh, the location and, and the scanning job. And we have the admin service for managed configuration. And also we can support uh, the deployment of um, different platforms like Docker, Kubernetes. Um, so other, uh, we also use other um, uh, open source project like the Docker distribution, uh, vulnerability scanning and content trust uh, and so on. Um, they all packaged into a containers. So uh, when, when we try to bring up a uh, harbor, just use a Docker, a Docker compose command or uh, some Kubernetes command uh, to, to deploy on the Kubernetes. Uh, after going through the basic uh, uh, introduction of harbor, I will introduce some of the typical uh, use cases that most of our users uh, like or, or, or use in, in this production environment. Uh, the first is the image consistency to maintain uh, the, the, the image across the life cycle of the, of the software development. And the second is the image replication across the different uh, places so that you create a very interesting deployment architecture that, that will introduce a little bit later. And also we have authentication and authorization for the image control, access control and vulnerability scanning on the image uh, content. And also have the image signing uh, for the, uh, for the uh, provenance of the image and hand trust management. The, the first one I want to talk about is the uh, uh, shipping the binaries. So, I mean, in a real, real world uh, application development environment, we, we often have different uh, 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 environment for like uh, test, de develop, development, testing, uh, staging, or production environment. So in all these environments that we, we usually need a different, uh, we usually all need a container, uh, container uh, images. Um, one way to do it is that people trying to ship the, the Docker file to across this environment and build it in, in those environment. But that will be create a problem for the consistency of the, of the, of the binary image. So uh, we, we, some, most of our users that we recommended is uh, we, we use the um, different registry in different environment, and then you use the uh, replication to populate the image across the boundary. So like here from the, from the gate uh, open, uh, source, uh, source code, and then go to the CI system, and then uh, build up the uh, container image to store in a development registry, and then we replicate the image to a testing environment uh, for, for, the, for the testing. Uh, after testing, if they, they passed, we can promote the image to the next level to the staging environment, staging registry. From there, we can eventually, uh, if everything works, uh, it, will, it will eventually go to the production registry. So by that means that we can maintain the consistency of the binary of the, of the, of the image so that if you have trouble in the production, you can easily trace back to your, to your development or testing environment for the actual uh, image that, that you are using in, the, in, in that production environment. The next one is a very useful feature that's uh, liked by our users is the image replication. Because it's a very common scenario when we try to, you need to move the image from one place to the other, or from, one, from the cloud, uh, to your uh, local data center or your, between your data centers. So the idea is very simple. At the beginning, when you set up a replication, you can just uh, replicate the image across the, uh, the, the network to the other end of the uh, Harbor instance so that you have a, exactly the same uh, copy of the uh, images. And then later on, when you have new image pushed to the source uh, Harbor registry, you can have incremental uh, replication um, to, the, to the other end so that you always maintain the same uh, uh, images on the two instances of Harbor. And furthermore, we, we added uh, other, other, other condition or criteria for this, uh, for this uh, uh, replication so that we can select which uh, images that you want to populate it to the other end. Uh, so we have filtering on the image. So some criteria like what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, tags, what kind of labels of the images uh, that you want to replicate it. Uh, you want to replicate, and also uh, you, we can use wildcard in the in your criteria specification. And we also have the um, the uh, time. I mean the the scheduled uh, schedule replication, so so that you you can schedule your replication drop at the at the at midnight uh, or 
or at a non-busy time uh, in your system so that it won't with your, affect your normal uh, workload uh, during the business time. Another scenario, another uh, use case for the uh, replication is the scale, uh, uh, scaling uh, horizontally. The idea is that uh, normal times that people, they have a, a large cluster of nodes, a container nodes that are in the data center. They want to uh, quickly populate the images to uh, all these uh, container nodes so that they can run the application. This is um, when, you're reading, when you are dealing with a very large uh, scale uh, container nodes, you oftentimes you will have an trouble uh, to have to populate all these nodes to, the, uh, to, to, these, uh, to these nodes. So if you only have one instance of, of registry, uh, so you will always uh, have a bottleneck for downloading the images from one place. So we, we have a replication to, ha to set up a second layer or second tier of the harbor instances so that you, will, you can replicate uh, the image to the next layer, next level, or next tier of harbor, and then distribute the, the images from there. In that way, uh, you can have the low balancing or the uh, re relatively evenly low uh, to the different harbor instances uh, so that you won't be, uh, have a bottleneck either in the networking or, or, the, or the storage. This is one many uh, of our internet company they are using that to treat their uh, treat their uh, large workload in the image image distribution. Another use case sample uh, for the replication is the globally replication. Um, so they can replicate uh, images across different location uh, in the either in the cloud or in the data center. Uh, we have a very large bank in the in the Spain that they are using the the harbor to replicate. Uh, the, the, the images across different uh, offices uh, in different continents. So that in this way, they can have the image backup in different location, as well as the local access for the images uh, for different location. It will be very efficient that, in that way. That's the uh, uh, image moving around the images for the most of the operational uh, uh, <coughs> things. And. Um, the next, next scenario is the authorization and the authentication. So uh, for most of the enterprises, they, they need this uh, feature because they want to have access control. They want to authorize who can access. So in Harbor, images are grouped into project. So all the image belongs to a particular project. And then when you want to access the project, you need to have, have to be a common member of the project. Uh, so for the member, they have the role. Uh, we call it a role-based access control. If uh, for a guest role, it can only read the image. That means that it can only pull, pull the image from, from, the, from the registry. And then we have developer role, which can read and write uh, to the image. Uh, virtually, it's a docker pull and push. And you also have the admin administrator role, uh, which can do uh, all the things from the developer role. In addition to that, it can have a management role, like uh, managing, the, man man managing the member uh, on the role of the of each of the member. So by having the authorization and authentication of the registry, uh, the enterprise can easily control who have access to what re image registry very easily. And in terms of security, in addition to the access control, uh, for most of the enterprise, they need to have some kind, some way to scan the content to ensure they don't have any vulnerability inside their images. So we integrate it with another open source project uh, called Claire uh, to, uh, to perform the uh, scanning tasks. So um, once you have this task, we can periodically scan the images and to ensure there's no, uh, ensure to, to, to report any of the uh, problems or vulnerability found on, on that images. We frequently check with the, uh, the CVE database. Uh, currently, we, we are checking with these five uh, database. Uh, for the for the known uh, vulnerabilities, and we can also set a threshold in Harbor to say that uh, if that um, vulnerability is past some threshold, we won't let it to be pulled. That means that uh, we we uh, we can uh, classify the uh, vulnerability into several level. Uh, this is low, medium, and and high. So for example, we set threshold to medium. So any any images that's with the threat. Uh, with the vulnerability uh, severity level of medium or higher or, or higher will be blocked uh, by harbor so no, no one can pull from harbor uh, so that in, in that way we can uh, ensure that uh, uh, images with the severe uh, vulnerability cannot pass through the system pass into go into the system 
And the next feature of the uh, security is the image signing. So uh, oftentimes we need to know uh, how, uh, which this image, a particular image has come from, which, which author or which, uh, which, which the, what's the source of this uh, image. So we can sign the image with, uh, when pushing to the registry. Uh, and then uh, we can enforce this signing policy when we try to pull the image from the registry. So any unsigned images can be blocked. Uh, any request to the unsigned image will be blocked uh, if, if they, they haven't been signed. So this is uh, actually done by uh, using another CNCF project called Notary. Uh, Notary basically will uh, allow us to store the signature for a particular image. Uh, and then when we are pulling the, uh, the image from the registry, we will check with the, the signature stored in the notary, and then we'll find out whether it is a known, uh, known source or, or not, uh, that's trustable or not. And the next feature is the ham chart management. So ham chart is the way that more recently uh, become more popular for deploying application on top of uh, Kubernetes. So basically ham chart is helping us to deploy up a uh, number of uh, containers uh, to be to be running on uh, Kubernetes. So we unify the image management and Hamtrack repo management together, and to perform the access control and, and deployment integration, uh, so that you have a consistent way to to manage all these two uh, artifacts. And in our roadmap, we also consider to to build up the the replication and signing and, and scan, scanning for the uh, the Hamtrack. So that we more uh, friendly experience uh, when using the uh, the the ham chart with the, your container images. Um, so next, uh, I would like to have uh, my my colleague uh, Stephen for some demo for the uh, ham chart management and the uh, and also the uh, the the other is the replication features. Like Stephen. Okay, uh, let's see the demo. Uh, the first demo is about uh, how to manage your harm chart in the harbor. Uh, that's a new feature delivered in recent uh, uh, harbor release. Okay, in this demo, we'll cover two parts. The first part, uh, we will show how to uh, use the uh, harbor portal to manage, uh, manage your harm chart, and then in the second part, we'll show how to use the harm native co uh, command line to uh, handle the related uh, uh, operation of a harm chart. First, uh, let's uh, uh, go into the project, login harbor portal. And uh, uh, click the uh, project library. This is a project. There is a tab named harm chart to show all your uh, harm charts. Uh, so far, we do not have any one. Let's uh, upload a new one. Yeah. You can uh, directly use the upload button to upload your uh, uh, harm chart to Harbor. Okay, now we have uploaded a new one Harbor. This is a harm chart, our self uh, chart. This is uh, a chart version uh, 0.2. And then you can uh, check the details of the uh, each of the uh, harm chart version with the, their readme and uh, there are some metadata uh, like uh, the uh, repository and uh, the maintainers. And uh, uh, also we will show some uh, command reference for you to uh, use that harm chart. Okay. <clears throat> oh, let's move on. And if the chart has a direct uh, uh, dependencies, we'll show the uh, dependent uh, harm chart in the dependency tab. Uh, for example, in Harbor harm chart, we'll use uh, depend on the Redis harm chart. So you can see a Redis chart uh, in the dependency tab. Uh, here I want to mention only the direct uh, 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 dependency uh, will be show, shown here. Uh, we do not do recursively uh, dependency discovery. So far, okay. There is another tab value. We'll show the uh, value the YAML uh, content in this uh, view. Uh, we support uh, two different views. One is uh, you know a key value pairs table uh, for you quickly to uh, find the uh, 
the required key. And another one is the pure uh, YAML view, pure YAML file view. Okay, that's uh, you know, the native YAML. This just a view, we do not support any edit here. And uh, for the uh, Helm chart, for the specific chart version, you can use the uh, download button to directly download the uh, Helm chart to your uh, local system, first system. You can see, yeah, it's downloaded. Here. Okay, let's upload. Now, uh, we may, uh, we all know, yeah, uh, Hypercharger supports a progress fair. That means it's a, a digital signature of the Hypercharger package. We can upload the Hypercharger, uh, we can upload the progress fair when we upload the Hypercharger package together with the progress fair. Okay. Yeah, if the progress file is uploaded uh, together with the Helm chart package, then we will uh, show a uh, different uh, uh, signature status in the uh, detail page. You can see here, if we the Helm chart has a progress file, the send status will be uh, show sent. Uh, if uh, there is no uh, progress related with the Helm chart package, so we can show oh, it's unset. Currently, the, we just check the status, the existence of the progress uh, uh, progress fair, we do not do any uh, verification of the, you know, the progress fair. That maybe do next. <coughs> okay, that's the part in a uh, Harbor portal. Okay, let's say next. Okay, let's back to the uh, terminal, use the uh, command line, Helm command line. First, uh, we can, uh, because Harbor is a Helm uh, repository, so we can use the Helm repo add to add uh, the uh, Harbor to the repository list first. Because uh, uh, if you use the latest Helm uh, command, uh, Helm uh, version, you can ignore the set file key and the key file options because when we record this uh, demo, there is some bug in uh, Helm uh, command. So we need to provide a certified and a key file option. If you use the latest one, I don't think you can just ignore those two options. <coughs> okay, Harbor is already added to the Helm repository list. You can check, okay. And then let's use the Hammer push plugin, which is a plugin for Hammer to you know push the uh, Hammer chart package from the terminal. We used the uh, uh, account with a uh, system admin uh, role. That's me. It's a system admin. Okay, it's successfully pushed to the Hammer repository. Uh, you can check this one. That's the chart version. Okay, everything is okay. Now next, uh, let's use a different role. Yeah, we use a username with a developer role, not a system role. Yeah, the DDV user just has a developer role. I think developer is also has the permission to use the push command to push Hammer chart package to the Hubber repository. Let's put a new Helm chart package. Okay, it's successfully done. Check it. Yeah, Rabbit MQ Helm chart here. Click the chart version. See the details, everything is okay. <coughs> okay, let's try a new user with a guest role. Let's see what happened. Yeah, guest user is a member with guest role. Okay. 
push a call cook DB. Okay, you can say uh, 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 for zero row three, code is retained permission denied. So you need uh, at least the developer role to push the Helm chart package to Hyper repository. Okay, that's uh, the first demo show how we can manage Helm chart in Hyper. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, the second demo will uh, demonstrate uh, how to replicate your image with the label filter. Okay, first you can see in the uh, SRC, this is in this demo, we have two different uh, uh, harbor instances. One is the source harbor, and another is the target uh, harbor. We will replicate uh, the image from source harbor to uh, the target harbor. First, let's check the content in the source harbor. You can see in the library project, we have three uh, different texts, image text, 1.0 to 3.0. And uh, only the 1.0 and the 2.0 has the label CI passed. Okay, the 3.0 tag has no any labels. Okay, that's the current uh, status of the source project in Source Harbor pro, uh, registry. Let's create a replication policy. Give a name to the policy. Okay. Row zero one and select select the image uh, the source project of uh, of the image is fr uh, from. Let's select the library and uh, add a filter. We support a different filter repository name tag name and also a label filter which is delivered in recent uh, uh, Harbor uh, release. <coughs> okay, let's use the label and select. Okay, say I pass that means only. The image with the CI path label can be replicated to the target harbor instance. One label selected and uh, select the target harbor and uh, uh, use, uh, select the trigger model, keep the trigger model at the default menu. Save the replication row. This is the row. Okay. Now let's check the status of in the Target harbor. In the target library, there is nothing, okay? No any image in the target project of the target harbor. Let's trigger the replication. Okay, it's started. Done. Okay, the replication is done. It's a manually triggered uh, action. Okay, let's check the target. You can say in the target project of the target uh, harbor, the 1.0 and the 2.0 tag is already replicated to the uh, target harbor. Okay, uh, the 3.0 tag is ignored because it has no label named uh, CI pass. Okay, that's the replication with uh, uh, label with label field. Okay. Uh, after the demo, I want to uh, I'd like to share some insight of Harbor. Okay, some potential director of uh, Harbor in future. Okay. Uh, uh, I want to mention here. I'm not gonna to explore more details in this uh, introduction session. We have a deep dive session in Thursday uh, afternoon. If you want to learn more details of the potential direction in future of Harbor, you can. Uh, join us in the deep dive uh, session. Okay, I'll quickly go through these uh, 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 items. First, in addition to uh, the local DB and the RDAP uh, authentication type, uh, we uh, we are planning to support OIDC against the OIDC provider to support uh, uh, token-based authentication. After that, you can use the token-based uh, token access token to access uh, Harbor API. Okay, that may be uh, easier for uh, do some, uh, for doing integration with Harbor. Okay, and uh, for the DevOps pipeline support, we are plan to support a robot account to, uh, for the CI/CD pipeline to easily pull and push image uh, in the pipeline instead of use a, a username credential. That's not uh, a convenient. Okay. Also, we. Uh, 
uh, enable webhook that means publish or expose some no, uh, events as a notification to uh, to let the uh, CI/CD pipeline aware what happened in Harbor, then they can do the follow-up uh, operations. Okay, and of course, um, in currently uh, the Harbor replication just support a replicate uh, image between Harbor instance. So in future, we improve the replication to support a replicate both image and harm charts between different, between harbor and non-harbor registry. That means you can uh, replicate your uh, image in harbor to some other cloud registry, for example, uh, Amazon registry, Google registry. Uh, so, uh, so there are so many, okay? So in future, we'll support such a sense. And for the tag life cycle management enhancement, we will, uh, want to support a retention policy. That means uh, you can uh, set some retention policy for your tag life cycle. You can only keep the you know the latest three or latest ten tags, and or remove the older the image all all the image older than you know some days. So you can set, uh, set some retention policy, okay? We also want to improve some uh, content, uh, to improve the content scanning, okay? Uh, we'll provide a more flexible uh, scaling, like a core-like uh, scaling that you can to set the scaling uh, per your requirement. We also want to, uh, we also plan to support a policy-based scanning. That means you can, create some policy to trigger the uh, content scanning. For example, like, uh, we want to you know, trigger the scanning every day or uh, weekly. That's a policy-based scanning, okay? For the harm chart repository, we also to improve the, uh, uh, to do some more improvement because I just mentioned, uh, currently we did not verify the progress fair uh, with the harm chart. So in future, we will do some verification to verify the preference if it, it's a valid, a valid uh, um, signature, okay? And about the life cycle support of Harbor on Kubernetes, uh, in next release, we will provide a Harbor Herm charter to deploy Harbor uh, to the target Kubernetes, and we want to do, uh, uh, to go further, the life cycle management of Harbor should support you know, cover the install, monitor, data backup, and up, uh, upgrade, uh, and so on, operation scenarios, okay? And uh, the last one is uh, image proxy and cache. That means Harbor can be, uh, Harbor can behave as a cache of upstream uh, registry like Docker Harbor. Also, we can provide a version control for the cache image. That's uh, uh, what we want to do in the future, okay? If you have some good suggestion comments, you can go to our uh, repo to read the issue. So as I mentioned, there is a Harbor Dev session in Thursday, December 13th. So welcome to join, and uh, we are waiting, looking for, forward to your good suggestion, okay? We also have a uh, maintainer booth. Here is the list. If you want to talk more, please come to the maintainer booth. Thank you. Do you have any questions that Thank you, thank you for this. Any any question? Come to come to us because almost almost time. We have one or two two more minutes. Uh, maybe for one more question. Okay. If uh, in the use case you described, where I'm thinking the bank that have uh, multiple sites across the world. Uh, if I have a CI system that uh, creates an image, how do I orchestrate the the process timing wise? So. I only deployed the new application on the Kubernetes cluster after the image was propagated. So how does, like if I push the image and there's, how do I time the, the deployment to the image being uh, propagated to the, to the sites? Yeah, once, once you have the image in, push inside the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, registry, then you can set the policy, replication policy I show, show here. Is that the timing? You can set uh, what's the time that you want it to be populated to the next level, so that you you have the so timing here. So you will have a way to specify the time at a particular time 
by, by default, it's normally in the immediately be replicated. Yeah, but how, do I, how, how, do I, how does the CI uh, system know uh, how much to wait until the image is present on the on all of the sites? I. Okay. Yeah, right now we don't have a way to tell. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, so that's a good suggestion. Yeah, I hope you can uh, give some feedback on the issue of PR. And join. we also have a community call uh, regularly. So we welcome everybody to join that call to discuss with us. And we also maintain a session that you're welcome to, to join. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I know we are, we are out of the time. Thanks. Yeah.